First and foremost, Donald Trump lost the 2020 election. Uh, you accept that fact? Uh, well, look, there's a lot, large portion of the country that has issues with the 2020 election. There are still discussion about things that went on. Large uh, portion of the country of believes in ghosts or horoscopes. I'm asking you, do you accept the results of the election that Donald Trump lost? Well, I'm just here as an attorney representing a client, but I think the important thing is— I, it's, uh, And I'll yeah. keep moving. I want to give you the opportunity to answer it. It's a very easy question to answer. If, if, if you can't answer it, I've got other questions. Well, my personal opinions are rather neither, neither here nor there. They're no better than anybody else's. That was the attorney for Trump lawyer and coup architect, coup, coup plot architect John Eastman, doubling down on the same baseless, bogus claims of election fraud that have landed his client in hot water. Most recently, as Donald Trump's co-conspirator number two in his latest federal indictment. The pileup for Eastman's legal troubles so enormous that he has now boldly asked a judge in California to postpone disbarment proceedings against him so that he can wait out the possibility of his own charges from special counsel Jack Smith. We are back with Pete and with Harry. Pete, how bad is it? It is so bad for John Eastman that he has to fight his own disbarment and 11 disciplinary charges in California with the argument that he might also face federal criminal charges. Right. And let's keep in mind, these 11 charges are extraordinary. They are failing to follow the Constitution, failing to follow federal law, misleading a court and moral turpitude. I mean, these are not, you know, kind of de minimis sort of problems for him. Imagine, if you will, a physician who was charged with, uh, you know, killing somebody on the operating room table and in the pursuit to try and revoke their medical license, they said, no, 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 let me keep it until the courts decide whether or not I killed this person or not. I, it's, it's an absurd argument. I mean, look, there is some element of needing to give somebody due process, needing to give them an ability to defend themselves. But the fact of the matter is Eastman has already given in, in innumerable hours of testimony in front of these bar proceedings, defending himself and providing information. So, you know, is there a chance that this gets delayed so that he can more fully defend himself? Sure. Add potential federal indictment, add to that a potential indictment in Fulton County in the state of Georgia. I just don't see any near end to the things that uh, John Eastman is very likely about to go through. Right. That math is not trending in the right direction for him. Harry, he, here's NBC's reporting on Eastman's argument. Quote, if the disbarment proceedings aren't postponed, Eastman's lawyers argued that their client faces the difficult choice of asserting his Fifth Amendment right, which allows people to refuse to provide testimony during the proceedings, which could potentially waive his constitutional right against self-incrimination. Harry, what's a judge going to think of that? I don't think much. I mean, forgive my bluntness, but it's a it's a nuts argument, and he's a crackpot. The we'll just start here. His tendency to incriminate himself, which is what triggers his Fifth Amendment right, is not going to go away when he's charged. That won't go away until the trial has got has run its course, appeals have happened, etc. So what he's really asking is, could he have a oh, you know, two three year kind of pause on the disbarment proceedings, and more importantly, probably for him, not go into criminal proceedings as someone who has been found uh, to have done these 11 things that Pete just mentioned up to and including moral turpitude. Yeah, I mean, Peter, it, it's interesting, I guess you could say, that Eastman's lawyer said last night that they're, quote, holding out hope that he will not be indicted. And if that was the case, then wouldn't they maybe not be so concerned about how charges could impact his disbarment proceedings? Well, I think they came to the sudden realization that all these statements that he was already has made to the California bar proceedings actually, in fact, are things that you know, Jack Smith and others are looking at and potentially using. But at the end of the day, I mean, there is an obligation to adhere to a certain moral and ethical standard to have a bar license, and that is independent of any sort of criminal behavior. But it all goes to between his statements and the statements of his attorneys, the sort of crazy world of disinformation in which they have bought into this narrative about all of this fraud about all of these things that demonstrably never happened and trying to maintain that in a court of law, trying to maintain that in a bar proceeding where facts come into play isn't going to hold up no matter what they say on television. Facts, 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 where facts come into play. That is not the territory that they are accustomed to playing. And Harry, you have Jack Smith's indictment against Trump literally laying out how Eastman admitted he knew what they were doing was wrong. One of the most damning accusations against him. Do you expect charges here, Harry? 
I do expect charges against him and all of them. I think they uh, he he stayed his hand at Smith in order to to make a fast charge against Trump. So yeah, Eastman's in in all kinds of trouble. And remember who Eastman is. His his he comes to Trump just because he's willing to say what Trump wants. It's all, and and look, he gets to be a rock star too uh, up on up on the ellipse. This is a guy who you know crawled out from under a rock because Trump was looking for anybody who would just uh, t tell him a crazy legal theory. So he's also going to try to say he relied on it, but there's 18 reasons why that won't fly either. I, I want to pick up, Pete, on something that Harry just said, which is this guy sort of appears from nowhere and then becomes a rock star. And I think part of what is important always when we talk about accountability for what happened here is it's, of course, retrospective accountability, but it's also accountability such that this does not happen in the future. The fact that Eastman is now being touted by many members of the conservative movement as a rock star, as a kind of hero, when you look at the long tail of democracy and what this will mean for us as a nation, it is hard to measure the impact of an Eastman on the future trajectory of both the conservative movement and on democracy itself. No, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, if you look at the level of mediocrity of the people that surrounded Trump in the last days of his administration, one, the alleged criminal behavior that they likely engaged in, but two, people like the same thing with Jeff Clark. I mean, people batting him around as some sort of hero and potential future attorney general in the next Trump administration. This is not simply accountability for past bad acts, for past alleged criminal acts. This is also very much trying to set a standard and hold to account bad behavior so that that it doesn't occur again in the future. Because all these people are being trumpeted as heroes, as up and comers. And as the facts, as you mentioned, the facts and the facts and all these indictments lay clearly out a pattern of Ill alleged illegal conduct, unacceptable conduct. And it's important not just because of the past, but what it means going into the future. <laughs>